All right, it's day two. Uh, so Tony's here from Jacksonville. Uh, Mike is still here from San Francisco. Just they're just and I knew we knew OG buddies, uh, OG friends that I uh, just sent a message and said, "Hey, you want to come out and mess with some Prevo stuff?" And I said, "Yeah, let's do it." So uh, anyway, we're going to be doing uh, doing the rest of the you know buttoning up the, the compressed air system, working on a couple other projects, and undercut the doors. Uh, we're going to hopefully have time to lay out where the cabinets are going to go, uh, lay out my stainless steel shelving and all of that. Uh, and so I'm going to be working on, uh, on these projects today. Uh, the biggest project right now is to get the, uh, the uh, unit strut set up. So I'm going to share with you how, how to mount uh, hose reels to either the ceiling or the wall uh, using unit strut and spring nuts uh, so that um, you, know, you can hit studs and hopefully make it look clean. Uh, and on the ceiling, I'm not really worried about the Unistrut, uh, but what I'd probably end up doing is painting the Unistrut if I was gonna do it, do it on the wall and wanted to mount these, these your hose reels sturdily. So anyway, um, I'm gonna work on that today. I don't have the hose reels yet. Uh, I'm doing all Cox reels, uh, both power reels for electric and then uh, pneumatic for, for the compressed air. So uh, stay tuned, we're gonna roll through, share with you what we're doing today. See if I get a little better shot here with the lights turned off, but here's the here's the piping system. We have the loop run all the way around. We have a drop here for this will be our packing station. So I wanted a drop there just in case in case we need it. Uh, our loop keeps continues to run around. There's another drop for back where our pallet racking area coming around back to our tank all right so this would be the outlet which we're going to work on here shortly let me come around and i'll show you here so right now what the guys are doing is cutting our unit strut so that we can prepare this for hose reels my hose reels are in production right now so they're coming so you see valve one valve two valve three valve four for our four hose reels that are going to be flanking the corners of the car and then i have this drop here <laughs> this this would be more for show than anything uh, but just an extra extra hose reel and then i'm going to have a ear clamp cover here to clean this up but i'll easy, be, easily be able to connect and disconnect my lift if necessary and of course these wires won't be here when i put the audio system and set that up properly so there's our loop pretty incredible here's our strut cut with a basic cut off wheel metal cut -off. about this operation. We didn't catch no the guard. <laughs> We're gonna be in trouble. Inside edge of the first reel, three quarter tile off. Right. So basically the center of the first reel will be somewhere right about there. Yep, I think that's the spot. Okay. Alright. Well that's that's great to try. Alright. Okay. All right, so tell me about how, how do we mount these things, these little tech screws? Yeah, we're using tech screws and fender washers. Don't I, don't I need to get like some big lag bolts and... I, I could hang it for this with tech screws. In. Yeah. We're good. We can double up with things. Don't hang off your cord from your wheel. Pretty strong. So here, we'll proof it for the viewing audience. 
<laughs> All right. All right. We test it. Okay. So now, 36 inches outside to outside. So we're gonna go that way. All right. So he's driving in our. What are, this, what are these? Are these, these quarter inch? What the textures? Yeah. They're number 12. These are number 12, one inch. Self tapping. Self drilling. Yeah, self drilling, self tapping metal screws to hold our shot in place. And then we'll show you in a minute here the spring nuts that will allow us to span this. We're basically creating our own stud to work off of. So here's our 3 8 spring nut, right, which goes in, spring loads and turns, right? You get the idea, so it goes in and then turns, and then we just take our 3 8 carriage bolts, I guess these aren't carriage, but just our one inch, one and a quarter by three eighths. All right, so we've got our plate painted, and we're gonna mount. There really isn't anything special with this. I mean, um, we should probably torque down the- This and this yeah. one too. Yeah. So, I mean, you, it comes with without these side plates on. I mean, I guess you probably don't even need those, do you? You could go right into the regulator but it looks cooler like that. I think so. And then you screw on the gauge. I think companies make bigger gauges too, don't they? Yeah. But once I get it set, I shouldn't have to mess with it. I need to try to find like a high end. These are so cheap. These, um, you know, AM fittings. Yeah. All right. Press wrench work on that one. Inches shorter than the center one. Okay. So maybe cut off a seven and three quarters off of this. Cool. Come on down just a hair. Keep coming down, 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 down. Right. Just a hair more. Nope. I said right there. Okay. Got some one inch stainless lags. I guess people are probably generally mounting these to block. I would like to have a better mounting plate. Dang it, I love this thing. Okay. 
I don't know. This the regulator was the part I was most excited about. And we got the Prevost around the right way. Yeah. See that? Right? How dare you? Yeah. We should hide that. Yeah. If I wasn't going to be hawking wares, then uh, you know, and maybe we might. Uh, yeah. This is advertising. People. Yeah, American flags coming off. Sorry to, sorry to Kevin from Air Attack, but that American flag is going to come off right about now. Sorry, America. I don't love you. I guess. Debadged. It's gonna really stink when we fire this thing up and we hear it's in like 45 spots. Say that. You just you're like, all right, I'm out of here. See you later. <laughs> Glad to help. It's like my GT3 RS. I put the exhaust on and then uh, I got to check engine light. So it's like I'd rather just not have the exhaust. Flex lines, we're gonna tie up this cord. Okay. Here, come, can you hold this end, Tony, right here? Mm -hmm. Just kind of hold it right where that's at. I mean, idea how this is gonna look. You don't want it sticking out too far. No, but it's, it can't make a tight bend, you yeah. don't want to kink it. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna cut it roughly at first yeah, and do a final cut. A half inch, it's gonna go I'd, I'd say we cut it here for now and then do a final cut. So where do we cut this with the cutoff wheel? Yeah, we can cut it with. Oh. All right. So did you just get this at an auto parts store? I bought it from anfittings.com. Okay. All right, so let's just. Because this is, uh, this is uh, uh, what is it, 12, what's it called? I think it's called A12 size, that, or they, so that's why we have to go at NPT to AN fitting. Right, perfect. Dang it, I can't wait to take pictures of this stuff. You know. When it's all done. Yeah. That's so sweet. I keep forgetting to look through the camera and not the uh, not, that not my eyeballs. Remember my my legs aren't so laggy on that That's wall there. <laughs> the whole thing's should come crashing down. I'm gonna come here tomorrow. He's laying on the, ground the floor, ground. yeah. Hanging from the line. Yank the uh, regulator off the wall, pull half the pipe down. I'll just quit. Just light the building on fire. Be blowing water through my lines now. Yeah, just, well. They're gonna say more about me licking your hose. That's what I'm saying. Say, that's the comments. <laughs> I already know. I'm definitely leaving that in. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> this is the fun part. Yeah, try not to get that in your fingers. Oh, you have to peel it back. How far does it have to come back? Oh, well, because it's what helps help cinch it down. So the so then the cover is kind of back over out. The... Yeah, just a little bit. Yep, and then you put the little ring on there, and then that's how it. See, fits. I'm coming up to this garage to learn things. <laughs> The only reason I knew is because I watched a couple of YouTube videos on it before yeah, I did I the other side. That's it. Pre-made. All right. That's how you had it. Yep. Okay. That's the ticket. First work related injury, man. Yeah. It's 
So you're gonna drop me nutty if we have this little, uh, you know. The problem is that's a, it's a swivel. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, let's figure it out. All right, we'll figure it out. All right, three dudes in the camera sitting here watching, and uh, we put the uh, put the outlet and the inlet, and the inlet and the outlet. So let's redo it. So we're undercutting the door here a little bit, so it'll close. All right. So what's the plan here? So what I did is I, I had this compression lined up over the Swiss tracks. Yep. And I punched out where the holes go so that we can move the compressor and then we'll know exactly where to use the rotor hammer to drill through the concrete. I don't have a rotor hammer, I'm not cool enough for that. Uh, you got a you know, hammer drill. There you go. Let's see, like that. Yeah. And punched Through. it out. You also know where to drill your hockey pucks. Yes. I guess you should drill those in the middle. Right. And drill those in the middle. Drill these first, drill the hockey pucks, slide the hockey pucks over, and then set the compressor on top of the bolt sticking through. Hockey pucks. Messing up my ramps. So these are a four and three quarter sized anchors. Yeah. There's our anchors ready for the compressor. Yeah, I like the idea of us floating this right on top of the Swiss tracks. That way we get a uh, little more height out of it for our tank on the bottom. Yeah. Our drain. Yeah, that's gonna help. We're swapping out some tiles. That was me trying to get it off the uh, pallet on myself. Oh, when you first unloaded it? That was sketchy. Yeah, I bet. Get some lean angle on it. Freak yourself out. It was not knowing, not knowing if I could get, if I could, how far I could lean it and still manage it. Yeah, before that. Not really sure. Yeah. The end takes over. Now when we twist this in place and ruin those three tiles. Well, I was thinking just if we could get it, because that way I can see, make sure all the studs are going to line up. If we just slide it over, if we do slide it over and, and get an eyeball and look at it, and then we can, if we do. Let's say we do two like this and then have these here. We could rock it forward or rock it back, pull these two out. Okay, so then two sets, it, yeah, but then, still in the middle. Mm -hmm. I got you. Rock it back, slide block. Just one at a time. I would bring it out further. We're going to have much for, yeah. It's got a cut. Okay, and then this way. Hang on, let me get over here. Go. Now just steady it, man, so it would fall over. Got it. Side to side. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Let's get back here. This way again. Okay. You got it? We're tipping over here at least. Yeah. I didn't know there was a cutout here. It's yeah, the cutout. 
I'll hold it on the side. Okay, now I'll get down low if you guys can steady it, and I'll slide it from the bottom. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're barely even on it. Yeah, it's the oh, cutout. Yeah, okay. The back ones are going to hit the back wall. Yep. Are they? Yep. So we need to rock it forward and kick the. Yeah, but this is this is sketchy. We uh, let's um, let's let's rock it back first, and then what we should do is cut one of these. You just put it. Well, I would say if we cut one and put it sideways, we can bridge this cutout. Can you guys rock it back a little bit? Go ahead and set it on there for now, and then I'll cut this real quick. Here, well, let me rock it forward and push, push those back ones in, I think, a little bit. Because we'll want to pull those out from the, to the front somehow. You got it? Yeah, I think I just too much. There we go. I should cut now. How do they even lift this up? I mean, what you can do. Yeah, well, they put on a pallet, but what they do, I think they put it through the, through here. Yeah. Put some two by or four by fours and, and, and lift up on the side. yeah, that's a good point. How do they get it up onto the pallet? Maybe a tank strap? Can I see a post where a guy has dropped his in his garage? PJ, yeah, yeah. He sent it to me. It fell like 12 inches from his GT3. You know, he had it on a furniture dolly and was, uh, you know, trying to put it in position and just got away from it. He doing it all by himself? Yeah. And that's why. Okay. Well, this one's too long. Yeah, so we're gonna, I'm going to take it out and just see if it's going to clear the feet. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Up a little bit. Good, right there. Okay. Look better? Yes. Okay. Now, kind of has to come this way a little bit. I think. We got to yeah, toward you. See what? In the back. Oh. Okay. Now come down. Okay. So, all right. Let's try sliding. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. We leaned it back. Ready? Lift it up. There you go. Okay. So we got to not lean it back. Push from the bottom. Okay. It's gonna come this way just okay. a little bit. All right. How are we looking on the back? The back's right there. Okay. All right. Okay. We're darn close. Okay. So let's try. What we want to do is lean it. We literally want to lean it. Forward, forward and get the back, get up. the first block out. Well, we got to do the back front first. Yeah, because the, back the blocks here. have to slide this way. Oh, well, we can't. Yeah, we can. We can put them here. We'll just put some on the side now. If you lean it forward, I could probably turn it out. Okay, one at a time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> kind of got it over the studs. Yeah. You got that side? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Hold on. Come up a little bit. Right there. Okay. Right. That's that side. Now get this front block here. Maybe put that one back. Okay. We're gonna now we're off. Right, that one's in. Let's I gotta go. hit that one. I gotta hit that one over there. We could probably just turn the turn the machine. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're good. Okay. Alright. So we're gonna have to do the back. Back again. So lean it forward. Okay. okay. Now this one. You gotta walk down on it. It's hitting on the, it's resting on the stud a little bit. Is right it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this side too. Just twist it back and forth. Wait, are the studs too big for the holes? Are the threads hitting the hole slots? Yeah. Oh, they're not five eighths. They're half. We have to drill out the. the oh. Well, we had a practice run. Let's get back up. There. Oh, that sucks. We got your list out. Yeah. The only thing is, we probably monkeyed up the threads now. Dang it. Well, we can start it with the thing and see. So we got to do lay this on its back, drill out the holes. 
on the tank. Uh, no, well, we got to get it off the studs first of all. So. All right, let's get prepared for. That's exactly what's going on, then. Big tackle forward. Mm -hmm. Are we selling this? Yep. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, we're going back. I'm pulling the other way. I think we can do a drill of these right here. Mm -hmm. I don't think this one's... Not, not quite. You got the front milled out a little bit? Then yeah, but I can't get front. I can't. The problem is I can't get to the back. Success. All right, now we gotta mm -hmm. it this way. Give me next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We got some more stout anchors. Yeah, five eighths. You asked me that too. <laughs> You're like, uh, the holes. I was like, ah, we got plenty of room. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Actually, I think it can go through. It must be resting on the other side. It's resting on this one here. Yeah, okay, let's bring it back. That's good right there. Um, tall flanking, so like closet flanking, yep. And then there'll be lower and uppers the rest of the way, except for the corner. I'm not gonna do an upper in the corner. Just leave it open. adjusting here to get this to fit. Get clearance under the tank now. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to make a um, obsessed garage air bucket vinyl because I'm gonna put a little <laughs> yep. yeah so he has these flush. And they're gonna pull a little bit of a little bit stretch, yeah. about a thread or two. Unlike me on my um, my lift over there. <laughs> well, they gave me six inch, or no, they were eight. I think they were eight. Here we go, moment of truth. Uh -huh. And is that the exit hose? Yes. Oh boy, here we go. So what were you saying about leave something open so we don't explode the... Well, we'll, shut, we'll just pressurize the compressor, right? Yeah. Get it up to operating pressure. Take the regulator all the way down to maybe 20 pounds. Open the ball valve, pressurize the system to 20, and then creep up on it 20, 40, 60, 80. So, we, so that way if we did forget to tighten the line, we don't just have a boom, blow apart. Yeah. We can, we'll, we'll hear it leaking before we get the explosion, theoretically. <laughs> Let you do the honors and turn on. No, go ahead. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. Oh, you got to pull the knife switch. Uh, knife switch. The, the knife switch on the wall. The wall. Like breaker. The, yeah, yeah. We're basically creating an atomic bomb right here, right? Quieter on the rubber. Yeah. 
see, I don't, I don't think that's loud at all. It's not. Yeah, they're talking about, you know, the little Ingersoll Rand is way louder than this is. I mean, especially over here. go 175 psi you have the regulator now I, I should, yeah. that means this line is not pressure all right so we turn 50 is up in the corner, right yeah. There. So let's go to 25. That should be 25 there. Let's turn this off so we carefully hear an air leak. Silence. Silence. <laughs> Alright, let's take it up to 50. I guess we should open up these uh, ball valves, huh? Yeah, man. Let's see, let's go to. Machines, what, what's the operating pressure? 90. There's 75. Uh oh. Something's leaking. Yeah. Oh, you don't hear that? Yeah. So, as you bring the pressure down, we'll drop it here. Now we're 50. Down. Here's our PMA 201. Well, this is a magnetic float type drain. Is it magnetic or am I making that up? Float valve. It's a float valve, but I think it's got a magnetic seat in it, so when it yeah. drops, it seals off with a magnet. But once it, once it gets enough water, it breaks the magnet yeah. loose and floats up. So what we're doing is setting up a intricate web of fittings in order to hold this little tank off to the side, off the front of the tank. So we don't have, this doesn't have to be powered, so it's different than a you know, typical solenoid type. This is what we call a baller drain right here. All right, so we're putting our spring nuts in. And then these are what, 3 8 inch, 1 inch by 3 8 with the washer. Let's do it, do the test. All right, I think we're good to hose it. Shoot, the whole, the whole beams are flexing, yeah. the actual building beams. So that's how we're going to mount our hose reels, which I'll share more when the hose reels actually show up. So here's our... That looks pretty, looks pretty stout up there, that's for sure. So that's where our hose reels will mount, and we have lateral positioning. And I need to bring some CarPro... Uh, RX to debadge those suckers. All right, so system is complete. I'm probably gonna process this, come back tomorrow, and I'll give you a, a quick rundown of everything that's in the system. But uh, and the reason why the lights turned off so we can see it on camera. But we've got the air. We got 160 psi sitting in the tank right now. All the lines are pressurized. No leaks. We got uh, our line here. We just kind of hung some down just to kind of see how it would do it when we have a workbench, but pretty sick. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Foot to the floor. Foot to the floor.